Well, class, here we go again, another lesson. Um, I've just been grading your tests. And, um, you know, in some ways, it's a lot like all the other tests you take. There are some students who seem to knock it out of the park. And I'm like, wow, they've been listening to what I've been saying. And it's stuck in their heads. And then there are some students where it's like, uh, am I speaking another language? Did you even watch my videos at all? Um, that's really disappointing, I have to be honest. It's kind of weird to be doing all these videos one after another where I'm talking to nobody is what it feels like. Um, and I'm wondering, are they listening? I look at these tests and I'm like, yeah, there's a few students who definitely are listening very well. And then there's a few who really aren't. And so um, again, I wanna challenge you and encourage you to remember um, that this is useful to you, that your parents are paying for this education and that by learning and applying your mind and trying to become uh, a better person and more knowledgeable, you can be more useful. Uh, to God uh, and using your talents to honor him. So let me get this uh, Europe PowerPoint going. Okay, maybe I saved a few seconds there. Um, I, I want you to make sure you have your map out. Um, and and while, while you're doing that, let me, let, me, uh, let me remind you, those other maps that I've, I've done with you um, where I've wondered, are you really doing it? I'm gonna ask you very soon to turn those in. You're gonna take a picture of those. You're going to uh, send them in. I'm gonna provide a place for you to do it. I'm gonna learn exactly the best way to do that. But you'll be taking a picture of your maps and I'll let you know about that later. So don't fall further behind. If you haven't done those maps or done them very well, then, then do them, you know, make that up. But starting now with Europe, let's focus on that. I'll, I will also tell you about an opportunity to learn your countries of Europe and we're gonna have a, a leaderboard and see who's learning them the quickest and most of them. This map right here is showing us some highways. It's not the best map we have to use. So let's move on to this one, okay? This one's showing countries and capitals. I'm not gonna ask you to learn, but just a few capitals. But the countries of Europe, um, I do want you to learn and I am going to provide a way for you to show off what you've learned. Okay, and then I'm gonna find the one I wanna to use to get started here. I need you with your map ready. So today we do the mapping of Europe and the, uh, some more information on the land and climate to write down. Okay, so here's a good map showing all the countries and I think your textbook maybe did not have Kosovo and so this is a map showing where Kosovo is. This part right here has really changed in the last couple decades, maybe more than that, but um, seeing the most change. Okay, let's use this one to get started with the bodies of water, okay? And you might recall the Barents Sea up here. You don't need to label the Barents again. We had that up there with uh, Russia. Um, so here is the Baltic, the Baltic Sea, where there's that little piece of Russia here because they wanted their warm water port on the Baltic Sea, okay? Baltic Sea over here is the North Sea. North Sea. I want you to label that. Pause my video at any time. Uh, make sure you're doing it because again, now I have told you for sure you will be sending this in to me at some point. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean is out here in case you didn't realize, didn't think about it. Yeah, the Atlantic, this is what lies between. This is the, the pond that they refer to. Um, the British are from across the pond. It's a very, very big pond. It's not a pond. Okay. Next we have, if you slip through the Strait of Gibraltar on a small map that looks like there's hardly any space there, that's actually about nine miles there, nine miles across the Strait of Gibraltar. I think I brought that up with Africa. You're in the Mediterranean. Now, the Mediterranean, not all of this water in here is the Mediterranean. Um, when I took my little trip down in the, in the senior trip and talked about picking up a rock, it's here in the Tyrrhenian Sea. You don't need to worry about that. Make sure you get the Mediterranean, spell it right. The R is the repeating letter. Unfortunately, this map doesn't have the Aegean Sea, so I'm gonna move to here. This, this one right here with all the little crumbs, it looks like crumbs from Greece. This is where the Apostle Paul traveled back and forth uh, from Turkey over to Greece, or Macedonia, they called it. This is the Aegean Sea. And then you know you can slip through all the way here to the Black Sea, the Black Sea, okay? 
Um, and I do think I wanted you to get the Adriatic. So on the east side of Italy, the Adriatic Sea, that's this part right here. Okay, pause it and, and go back if you need to get that again, because there's a lot to map here, so I better move on. Uh, map checklist, we'll do that later. Okay. Okay, going back a bit, let's see what we want to do next. Um, let's get some peninsulas. First of all, Europe is a peninsula of peninsulas is what it's been called. Europe itself is a peninsula if you pull back and look at it. Uh, but Europe also has these other peninsulas. Uh, let's just go ahead and use this one. Okay. So um, we'll go with Italy. Italy is the Apennine Peninsula. You don't hear that very often. And these are the Apennine Mountains. So you might as well just label the mountains of Italy. The Apennine Mountains. They're not very tall. Um, I've driven through there and, and yeah, they're, they're not amazing and beautiful like the Alps above them, but the Apennine Mountains, and this is the Apennine Peninsula. Okay. This peninsula right here, where you have France turning into Spain and Portugal, this is the Iberian Peninsula. We have talked about Iberia, I believe, oh, maybe that's coming up uh, in when we talk about uh, Latin America. Maybe I didn't mention that in Texas history. This region can be called Iberia, not to be confused with Siberia and Russia, the Iberian Peninsula, okay? And then this peninsula right here that Denmark is on, it's actually not called the Denmark or Denmarkian Peninsula, it's called Jutland, J-U-T-L-A-N-D. And does any map show that? Well, it's, sorry, it's Jutland, Jutland, one word, J-U-T, land. Uh, up here is the Scandinavian Peninsula. Lost my cursor, there we go. This is Norway and Sweden. They are the Scandinavian Peninsula. And when you hear uh, Scandinavia referenced, that's a region, not just this peninsula, but it's considered, uh, you know, Finland also, um, Denmark. This is Scandinavia. And these two here are the Scandinavian Peninsula. You have another peninsula down here at Greece, right here. You can kind of see it taking up all this area right here. This is the Balkan Peninsula. Uh, it's labeled on this map. Yeah, the Balkan Peninsula. And if you hear about trouble uh, a couple decades ago when this there was a war going on here, you heard about trouble in the Balkans. The Balkans is just this region down here in lower southeastern Europe. The Balkan Peninsula. Okay. Um, by the way, time out here, I, I realized when I was grading the test, I realized I didn't really spend time on the other units telling you, okay, label the countries. Remember in class, label the countries in red. I never asked you to do that. And I think especially with the Russia region, a lot of you guys had no idea even what countries were in that region. Um, those stand countries and, and these guys over here, Georgia, Armenia, and Azerbaijan. These countries, a lot of you guys put these on the test with Russia. This is, um, they were in the Soviet Union, but now that the Soviet Union is dissolved, we group this with Europe, okay? So these former Soviet republics, uh, these are now in Europe. So I'm not gonna go through and read every country of Europe, but I have told you now that I'm expecting you to label those. So on your map, and go back on your other maps that you're gonna turn into me later and take a picture. Make sure you've got countries labeled. Um, for those, it's not a big deal. There's not that many countries. For Europe, you're going to have to take the time, maybe print out another one if it's already too messy, and label the countries. I know there's some little bitty ones. Little bitty ones like uh, Luxembourg, um, Andorra, San Marino, you, you don't have to label those on your map. Those are tiny and hard to squeeze in there, I understand. Okay, let's get some mountains. This is a good one for that. The Pyrenees Mountains, the Pyrenees, uh, they divide Spain and France. Here's France, here's Spain, the Pyrenees. And inside the Pyrenees is a little country, a few of you know, but that is Andorra. We had a student in the State Geography B years ago, and he was asked a question, maybe in the second round, uh, in what country was the last Pyrenees brown bear shot? Fortunately, he knew that the Pyrenees were right here. So for him, it was a 50-50, is it Spain or is it France? I think he guessed wrong. 
uh, how would anybody know in which country the last brown bear was shot? It's kind of an annoying question, I'm sure, but um, he, he did know that the Pyrenees then were right here. So that's useful to know if you're gonna be someday at least. All right, the Alps. If you don't know where the Alps are, that's kind of embarrassing eventually. So make sure you know it's in Northern Italy. It's in uh, Austria. This is Austria. If you are not aware of the sound of music, um, you really ought to watch that movie or see that show. The, the hills are alive with the sound of music, they say. Um, the same actress as Mary Poppins shot just about the same year. Okay, Alps. Carpathians, the Carpathian Mountains running through Romania. Carpathians. Um, and then these here are called the Balkan Mountains. You can go ahead and make this backwards S and you don't have to label the Balkan Mountains. The Carpathians, just make sure you get the uh, kind of shade that in there. So you've got the Pyrenees, the Alps, the Carpathians, and the Apennines. And pause that now if you need to. Okay. Um, let's label a few more things like, for example, before I get to the map checklist, I'm going to, I think I can do this without checking it. Um, there's some islands. This island down here, see Italy is a boot, it's kicking a ball, and this is Sicily. Now, if you've ever watched The Princess Bride, I'll bet almost all of you have seen The Princess Bride, um, and so there's the Battle of Wits, when Wesley is going up against, uh, I forget his name, and uh, supposed to guess which, which one has the Iacane in it. Um, and, and he says, never match wits with a Sicilian and something. Uh, he's a Sicilian, the little bald guy that with that crazy laugh that killed over and died. He was from Sicily in the movie. That's Sicily. And then there is um, Sardinia. This country right here, uh, this, this is an island that belongs to Italy. Both of those belong to Italy. This is Sardinia right there. The one above it, Corsica. I'm sorry, I don't have the ideal map there. Well, you can see on this one because of the colors. Corsica belongs to France. Corsica belongs to France. You don't even have to label that one. Sardinia and Sicily are Italian. Now let's get Crete. Okay, Crete belongs to Greece. The island of Crete, um, great story in Acts. Um, there's a shipwreck. That's where the shipwreck is, right? Um, towards the end of Acts. Anyway, uh, Crete is an island of Greece. It's not its own country. Um, I want you to know what Great Britain is. Great Britain is not a country. It's the United Kingdom, this country up here, this orange country. It's the United Kingdom of Great Britain. This island is called Great Britain. And then this is Northern Ireland. And you know that inside the United Kingdom, there is Scotland and Wales and England. Um, okay. Here's your map checklist. Baltic Sea, North Sea, you can read it. I believe we did all that. Oh, rivers, it's rivers. We have to do that quick. I'll go back and make sure you get the Danube, the Rhine, and the Thames, it's pronounced. Got those mountains, peninsulas, other features, English Channel, and the North European Plain, and those capitals. Let me go back. Okay, guys, the English Channel is this uh, swimming challenge for this, the greatest long distance swimmers to see. You can swim across there, I forget, 20 miles or so. This is the English Channel. I don't know why that's not labeled on any of these. English Channel. The North European Plain, here you go, in big letters. North European Plain goes off into Russia. Great, great land, great climate, great for farming. Okay. As far as rivers, the Rhine River starts in the Alps. You might need a better map, huh? The Rhine starts in the Alps. I fed uh, ducks on the Rhine River as a wee lad. So starts in the Alps and heads through Germany. Yeah, you sorry, you got to get a get a map in your book, okay? Because that's not working. The Danube, the Danube is the longest river in Europe. It starts, it goes from black to black. It goes from the Black Forest of Germany to the Black Sea. And again, I've got a bad. I don't have adequate maps for you. It's 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 going from the Alps and and southern Germany out here to the Black Sea, goes under Romania. And then the Thames, it looks like Thames, but it's pronounced Thames, it's a short river, it just goes through the bottom of Great Britain, through London, 
and out there in the North Sea. Okay. Uh, pause right now and get those capitals before I move on. Get those capitals. Okay. You should know where those are. You can find those. Look them up online. Whatever you need to do, label those on your map. Okay. There's so much here. We're gonna go. We're gonna move on now. Uh, natural resources. There is an there is an abundance of coal and iron, and this fueled the industrial revolution. This is a historical term. Uh, a few of you guys are, are just like, I've heard that before. What is the Industrial Revolution? We'll be talking about that in the history, but it began in the late 1700s. Europe was the first part of the world to industrialize, to become more modern with the machinery and the, and the mass production of goods and people moving to the cities and, and um, jobs and making things. And you got to have a lot of coal and iron, and they've got that. They've also got a lot of oil and natural gas. That's helpful to them. Pause at any time to finish writing stuff down. Plenty of good farmland. Again, talking about why do some cultures, some parts of the world flourish and others don't. Um, one reason here is that Europe is blessed with their land and their climate. That's a fun map to see what they produce. Wish I had more time to talk about that. I'm gonna move on. This is a climate map. Okay, and so basically without having to memorize any of this, just notice that this rainy summer climate and this humid summer climate and this short summer, um, these are all great places to grow crops, easy to live, um, a little drier down here in the Mediterranean uh, and also beautiful. Okay, so the climate, Western Europe has mild winters, cool summers and plenty of rainfall. So when I, we're talking Western Europe, Think of the part that uh, was split with the Western world after World War II. Mild winters, cool summers, plenty of rainfall. Southern Europe, so kind of cutting across Spain and Italy and the, and the Balkans. Mild and rainy winters, warm and dry summers. Eastern and Northern, farther from the Atlantic means harsh winters. So East and North Europe, think uh, Scandinavia, think former Soviet Union, difficult land to live. This is average annual minimum temperature. You can spend time and look at that if you want to pause it now. Okay, we made it. This is uh, what we're doing next, the cultural geography of Europe. Um, and now let me just uh, challenge you guys to make sure you get that map looking good and stay tuned for what you're going to do to show me that you're learning the countries. Um, have a great day.